Okay, so this is the last play posit. This one should be fairly short. Uh, I'm not doing really any calculations here. Uh, there is a Namesy video on the Arrhenius equation, which is our main focus today. <coughs> it's called Arrhenius Made Easy. Uh, just introducing the idea for you so that you have an idea of what to do for, with, for the lab. Because the lab involves activation energy and the Arrhenius equation. So we're going to help explain the difference between collisions that convert reactants and, uh, to products and those that do not in terms of energy distribution and molecular orientation. We're also going to use representations of our energy profile for an elementary reaction from the reactants to the transition state to the products to make qualitative predictions regarding the relative temperature dependence of the reaction rate. Okay, so we have our activation energy. Uh, I've talked about this briefly before, but the key here is that at this peak, we have our transition state. You just watched a play pause on reaction mechanisms. So we can also say this transition state is our intermediate. Okay. So when we're looking at um, activation energy, our activation energy is the amount of energy but to get the... I know I'm waking up in eight hours. Stop that. <clears throat> I'm not actually waking up in eight hours. I'll be at work in eight hours. Womp womp. All right, so the energy between the reactants and the peak here is our activation energy. So we're gonna use EA, okay? Now, the other thing we like to label a lot is the difference between the reactants and products. Doesn't really have a place here in this play posit um, on Arrhenius equation, but it is delta H, so I just wanted to remind you of that. Okay. So, in a reaction, uh, we know we have some sort of reaction mechanism. And what's really important about the transition state or the intermediates, so this would be an example of a transition state, uh, what's really important is that we, uh, one, have the correct things colliding, and two, that they are colliding in the proper orientation. So, orientation matters. All right. So, what that means is that here we have our two reactants, and I'm going to put a circle around them. CLO is the reactant. We have two ClO molecules. For them to form Cl, like chlorine gas, and O2, they have to hit each other in this fashion so that the oxygen and the chlorines line up with each other. If they don't line up with each other in this way, they won't have enough energy to overcome uh, the attraction between the, the Cl and the O. We want to form a new attraction between our Cl and Cl and our L and O, but the they have to be able to hit in the right direction, in the right orientation for this to happen. And once they do, it's relatively favorable. We just have a little bit of activation energy to overcome there. Okay. So this is also where catalysts come in because oftentimes it's hard enough to get things to uh, collide in the proper orientation. Um, so they have to have both orientation and the right amount of energy. If we can at least assist one of those things, which would be the amount of activation energy needed, uh, then we'd be in pretty good shape. So the catalyst lowers our activation energy. Uh, there are two types of catalysts. There's a heterogeneous catalyst, and um, that exists in a different phase than the rest of the reactants. Uh, whereas a homogeneous cal uh, catalyst exists in the same phase as our reactant molecules. I wish that this example told us about phase, because we, we don't really have any anything to go off here in terms of space. 
But uh, the important thing is that there are two methods of ca uh, catalysis. We've got um, absorption and absorption. So I'll say that again, adsorption, AD, adsorption versus absorption. Okay. So absorption uh, is when um, one substance uh, is penetrated by another. So like water in a sponge is the example that they like to use. The, the sponge very clearly can soak up the water. Um, that would be absorption, right? But adsorption uh, would be things like your, your platinum catalyst um, or and when we're thinking electrochem, we use the platinum cathode so that the ions and the, uh, the gases have a surface that they could latch onto. Uh, so adsorption is more about uh, surface area. So surface for reaction to happen. Okay, so it's the surface for the reaction to happen on. So an example here, uh, enzyme catalysts often uh, operate under the, the absorption. Um, they, they fit in like that lock and key. So the other important thing we have to, to look at uh, to kind of wrap up this unit is the Arrhenius equation. We need to know um, why the relationship between temperature and rate is not direct. We also need to understand why uh, thermodynamically spontaneous reactions don't just happen spontaneously. That sounds weird, but what I mean by that is uh, we know that we have reactions that are favorable, uh, but they don't always happen at a fast rate. So why is that? That's what we're really looking for. Okay. So here we've got a graph of temperature versus the energy of activation. Uh, when we are at a lower temperature, we have a smaller uh, fraction of molecules or a larger fraction of molecules at a slower kinetic energy. Whereas at higher temperature, we've got a larger fraction of molecules uh, with a, a higher kinetic energy. Uh, so what we can what we can say is if we're we're looking at this graph uh, we know that at a lower temperature we've got this tiny little section here it's a tiny little section uh, small fraction of molecules that actually can reach um, the activate activation energy needed on their own when we're at a higher temperature I'm going to change colors to this. When we're at a higher temperature, we've got this whole section of molecules that have enough activation energy to proceed on their own. So higher temperatures are actually that more advantageous. If we think about it um, in terms of kinetic molecular theory, we know that things that have more kinetic energy move it at a faster rate, that it can increase the likelihood of collision, if it increases the likelihood of collision, we can increase the likelihood of them reacting, right? The likelihood of collision is just one aspect. We need our the right orientation for those things to, to occur. But in the long run, temperature does go a very long way in that regard. Okay. So if we think about it too, if we have a smaller activation energy, that means we typically have a larger rate constant. Uh, and therefore it will be a faster rate. If we have a larger activation energy, we would have a smaller rate constant and a slower rate. There's a bigger barrier that we have to overcome. It's also important to note that the kinetic energy of the molecules before collision is equal to potential energy during a collision. So that's why we have these transition states. Uh, we go back, I'm gonna go back to that. Uh, slide over here for a second. 
if we go back to here, um, all the kinetic energy that's here becomes potential energy up here. And they just have to hit each other in the right way for them to shift to the right and become products. Okay. So, the long-awaited Arrhenius equation. Uh, so the Arrhenius equation, uh, K is equal to uh, A times E raised to the negative activation energy divided by RT. Now, since we're looking at rates, one, this is our rate constant. This isn't an equilibrium thing, it's the rate constant. Uh, the R that we're using here is 8.314. So let me go back to my normal font. Hopefully you can, you can see that. R is equal to 8.314. And that is joules per mole Kelvin. Let me remind you of the units because that was tricky. Okay. Uh, the nice thing about this equation is that we can turn this into a two-point form. So I'm actually going to move this over for a second. Uh, we can say that this is equal to natural log of K equal to negative EA over R times 1 over T plus natural log of A. If we look at it in this form, we have a y equals mx plus b. So what does that mean about a graph of our rate versus our 1 over time? Ooh. Yeah, if you plot the natural log of k versus 1 over t, We've got this nice little slope here, and that slope allows us to figure out our activation energy. So this is something that showed up in our lab on kinetics, but they said that negative R times the activation energy gives you your slope. Well, that makes sense because our slope, um, I'm sorry, I wrote that wrong. Right there. Okay. So we have our slope is equal to negative EA over R. We can then rearrange this and say that EA, our activation energy, is equal to the slope times negative R. Okay. So this is what showed up in our lab. Uh, when we graph the natural log of our k values, we should be able to uh, multiply by r over here and get our activation energy for our reaction. Okay. Uh, the last little thing here, uh, this just shows what I was talking about before. We have before collision. Things have to be in the proper orientation uh, for those things to stick together. Right, these have to hit each other this way to overcome the attraction uh, between these two. Whereas if they hit in the wrong direction, like down here, it's an ineffective collision and they just bounce off each other and nothing happens. Okay. And so here's my plot. If I have my um, natural log of K against one over T, I'll get a nice linear uh, regression line. We can look at the slope of that and figure out our activation energy. And then natural log of A is just, uh, that's a, the Arrhenius constant, um, which is different based on each reaction. Uh, the natural log of A is my, my y-intercept. Okay. So the reaction N2O5 uh, gives us 4NO2 plus O2. 
and they give us several temperatures. Uh, so they want us to uh, calculate the values of activation energy for this reaction. The easiest thing to do is put this thing in our calculator. So here's my calculator. And oh, I'm going to go to edit. I had a bunch of things in my list from the last play pause, so I need to go clear those out real quick. Should have just done clear all entries, I'm sorry. Okay, and so I go up in increments of 10 degrees from 20 to 60, so that's easy. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And I have 2.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. Oop. 2.0 e, eh. e negative 5. Uh, what was it? 7.3 e negative 5. And then I've got 2.7 and 9.1. The negative fourth, 2.7 e, negative four, and 9.1 e, negative four, right? That's what I said. Yep, and then my last one is 2.9 times 10 to the negative third. So 2.9 e, negative three. Cool. All right, so those are the normal graphs, but what I need is I need 1 divided by my temperature. And actually, something I forgot to mention is that temperature needs to be in Kelvin. And I'm glad I'm, I'm doing this now. So we have L1 plus 273. Hopefully that works out the way I want it to. Actually, let's just do it this way. L3 can be my L1 values. L1 plus 273. Why does this need to be in Kelvin? Well, it needs to be in Kelvin because my R value is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. All right, so in L4, I put 1 over my temperature in Kelvin, and then I'm going to go put in L5, um, I want my natural log of my K, which is L2. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my stat plot, and in my plot, I want to graph. L4, which is my 1 over T, and L5, which is my natural log of K. And I want to make sure that's turned on. And I can go back to stat calc number 4, put in L4, oop, comma, L5, comma, and then, uh, sorry, variables, because I want to put this in my y1. Press enter. And I get negative 12174.45. Uh, so I'm going to write that down. And that's a fairly good uh, correlation there. So one, negative 12174. Okay. So my slope is equal to negative 12174. So 0.45, okay, and I'm going to plot it just so I can see. It's going to look nice and fancy. Zoom 9. What? Oh, I had another plot on. I'm sorry. Let's try that. Take this one out. Should have cleared everything from before. Let's try this again. Zoom 9. Okay, that's beautiful. Look at that. Perfect. Okay. So... Remember that my slope is equal to my activation energy, negative activation energy over R. 
So if I multiply this by 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, negative 8.314, I'm sorry, I should get my activation energy. So Ea is equal to uh, negative 12174 times 8.314. Okay. And I get negative, or sorry, that should have been a neg positive. Let's try that again. 8.314. All right, so I get 101214. Let's put that in kilojoules. I get 101.2 kilojoules. It's my activation energy. 101.2 kilojoules uh, per mole as my activation energy. Not too bad. Okay. And I believe that is all. Have a great day.